Hey, how's it going, folks? Well, Impact Wrestling did do their Slammiversary pay-per-view tonight in Dallas, Texas. And overall, it was really decent show. I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. Uh, most of the matches were excellent. There was a few things that I wasn't too fond of, but all in all, it was an excellent pay-per-view. And Impact has really stepped up their game over the last six to nine months, they've really done some stuff that has been intriguing. They built up a lot of their stars, and I'm really enjoying their product. And hopefully, they can find some better television and gain a little bit more viewership. The opening match was uh, X Division match with Willie Mack versus Jake Christ versus Trey Miguel versus TJP. And this was a great opener. Everyone looked awesome. And quite honestly, TJP, since leaving the WWE, his work in Impact, he's showing the stuff he can really do. His stuff that he did in Impact before, his stuff from the Independence, And he really pulled out all the stops tonight. Also, Trey Miguel of the Rascals, excellent talent. And what can I say about Willie Mack? He's a big guy, very agile. He knows how to move. Ultimately, the finisher, we saw Willie Mack defeat uh, Jake Chris, TJP, and Trey Miguel. And it was a great opener match. And then we seen for the Impact World Tag Team titles, newly crowned champions, the North Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, they squared off against LAX and the Rascals. Ethan Page and Josh Alexander work great as heels. LAX were really over in the match and the Rascals obviously high flying. They all complemented each other really well. Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, um, they really have this mystique to them. Josh, I know he wears the um, the head apparatus, kind of like Rick Steiner, but they kind of reminded me of the Steiners tonight. And ultimately, they got the win and they retained the titles. Great match. Then we got Eddie Edwards versus Killer Cross. This was a first blood match. It wasn't really my favorite. There was obviously a lot of extreme spots, um, some blood, and ultimately, Eddie Edwards did defeat Killer Cross, and he got first blood on him. And then we saw Moose versus Rob Van Dam, another excellent match. Rob Van Dam, he's 48 years old. He's still able to move quite well, still able to do all of his signature spots. And in the end, Moose did reign supreme over Rob Van Dam. And then we had the Monsters Ball Impact Knockouts Championship match. Taya Valkyrie versus Sue Young versus Havoc versus Rosemary. We saw the weapons here. It got extreme. Ladders. We saw thumbtacks. Um, even dog collars. Things like that. Ultimately, Taya Valkyrie did retain her title. This match was okay. It was kind of on the same scale to me as the first blood match. Um, nothing crazy. Uh, some of those bumps were kind of cool to see. But at the same time... I wasn't too interested overall in that type of match. Um, then we went into the X Division Championship match. Rich Swan versus Johnny Impact. And both of these guys, great chemistry together. Rich Swan, obviously, since leaving WWE, he's able to shine a lot more and showcase a lot of his in-ring talent. Stuff he wasn't able to do in the WWE. And... I honestly thought that Johnny Impact was going to win, but Rich Swan ended up getting um, the W after a Phoenix Splash. Excellent match. Rich Swan put up a great performance. Same with Johnny Impact. And then we had the Impact World Heavyweight Championship match. Brian Cage versus Michael Elgin. And quite honestly, I had very low expectations going into this match. This was, you know, uh, touted as the main event of the show, even though it wasn't. At the end of the show, we had a different main event, but overall they were um, touting it as something that was this main match for Impact. It wasn't something I was really looking forward to, but I'm going to eat my words. It was an excellent match. Um, 
I'm not a huge Michael Elgin fan, but he started making me into a fan. The stuff he was doing with Brian Cage. Brian Cage is an awesome hand. Both these guys, they put on an excellent show. And I honestly thought that Michael Elgin was going to win gold tonight, but he didn't. Brian Cage retained, and he is still your Impact Heavyweight Champion. And now into the main event, intergender match. Sammy Callahan versus Tessa Blanchard. And Tessa gave Sammy a run for his money. I know a lot of people say, you know, these types of intergender matches, they aren't believable. But I don't know. There was something about this one. It really worked. These two really clicked together. And Tessa Blanchard is an excellent talent. In the end, Sammy Callahan did get the win. But overall, it was a great match. And one last thing here. At the end of the uh, Brian Cage versus Michael Elgin match. We did have Michael Elgin basically play sore loser. He went to attack Don Callis. And then from there, there was a masked man who came out. If you did watch the video earlier, we spoke on how Rhino was backstage and expected to appear. Well, he did appear under a mask. He went for gore and then he left into the audience and they didn't say it was Rhino, but obviously you can tell it was him. And I'm not sure if they're just keeping him under a mask since his contract with WWE is supposed to expire soon. And maybe his contract already was expired. He did tell Chris Van Vliet that his contract expires July 17th. Not sure if he got those dates mixed up or WWE just agreed to let him go a little bit early. Regardless... Rhino has appeared on Impact Television once again. He was under a mask and he did make the save on Don Callis. Overall, excellent show tonight. I want to give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. Really enjoying Impact Wrestling lately. You let me know in the comments below what you thought of this pay-per-view. As always, don't forget to DDT that like button and subscribe. Join the notification squad to be notified of new videos. And have a great day.